So what we're going to use is an array list. So in the help documents, we can look through here at the array list and start to understand it uses particles as part of this because then we're generating particles and then they fade out when they fade too small, then we just uh, remove them from that array list. So arrays are fixed length and we can't do much with that. Array lists are dynamic. So we can add to them, we can remove from them. So it gives us more flexibility. Um, it Using something that's dynamic like that, where we're always adding and subtracting objects from our project over time could be a performance bottleneck. And that's why it's nice to have a fixed amount or a pool of things that we're drawing from because the creation portion of adding new objects to a project can sometimes cause more overhead than simply managing a fixed number of them. So they work a little bit different that way, but um, within an array list, we can remove things. Uh, when we are removing from it and removing all of them, not just one, it's recommended we go start at the end and work back towards the beginning on array list. Uh, because otherwise there is the potential for trying to remove something that's not quite there because the length or size of our array list then changes every time we remove something. So that's why we start at the end or the last item and work back to the beginning. So all of this will make more sense once we start putting them in. But uh, what's important to know is that our syntax is a little bit different as we work with it. So back in our code here, we're going to now not have a single pickup. Uh, we'll leave that for now, but then we'll be, uh, well, we're just gonna comment that out. And what we will do is go array list. And now we use the angle brackets. And we say what type of object is gonna be in our array list. I'll call this pickups and then We'll have our pickups max, so we'll store a value for that as well. So with that, we're going, and then we are going to need a pickup timer, but first we're just gonna add a bunch of pickups to the screen or to our project. So we'll add them in, and then we'll figure out how to do it with a timer here. So this one, we'll comment that out. Again, you can see it's actually not bad to have that commented out because that will help us to find all of the ones that we need to update or fix as we work with it. So now our, so our pickups is going to be a new array list, square bracket, pickup. And notice unlike an array, we don't have to actually say how many are in it because again it's dynamic so we just add new things to it and then we remove things so there are three methods that we use so one method is going to be add and then we the thing we're adding the, next if we want to access something we use the word get and then we We refer to the position in the array, so similar to what we do with arrays, or I mean array list. And then our final method is remove, and when we remove again, it's by position. So we have three things that we are able to do with our, well that, I mean there's more, but those are the three we're going to need to do as part of this, is adding in those items. So with that, let's just go pickups dot add. And now what we're doing is we're, we're going to just add one of each. We'll add one heart and one ammo. So with this, it's pickups dot add. And we say new pickup and then heart. And then pickups. Oh, forgot my quote. I'm like, why is it still in dark gray? So sometimes the color coding of our code hinting is useful. 
Now pick up ammo. So now we have our two pickups there. And then what we want to do is we want to display them. Oh, and we need to define how many we're going to have. And then we'll go um, pickups max is equal to, in this case, two. So again, I just want to verify, I called it pickups max, okay. All right, so we're gonna take this, all this pickup intersect stuff here, and we need to wrap that into a whole for statement along with our display and update. So what we will do is just go if, not f, sorry, for int i is equal to zero, i is less than pickups.size, not pickups.max. And the reason why is eventually, you know, we're going to have, you know, every time we loop through this, it'll be based on however many are currently on screen because if the player goes and quickly picks up, like say, five pickups before the timer clicks out the next one, the size of our pickup array has changed. So we're looping through not based on a finite fixed number of objects like when we use arrays, but instead it's dynamic. Our max is gonna be useful because then when we decide when our timer goes off, we'll decide whether we want to add another one or not based on that maximum value. All right, so all of that in dense one. So again, uh, command or control, and then the square bracket keys will indent left or right as we work our way across. And now it's grumping at me here because I forgot a parenthesis. Let's put that in. Now we're still grumping because we have pickup, but we don't have a pickup anymore. We want to refer to the particular pickup that we're working with. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of what we wrote here already, and we're going to make a temporary variable. Because otherwise, the way that we reference the current one we're going through during this loop, we would say pickups dot get parenthesis i. So, if we took and put this here, 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 yeah, that's really ugly. But we can just say, we'll make a temporary variable and I'll call, you know, we, again, we have to specify what kind of object it's gonna be and we'll call it pickup is equal to, so the class name, capital P, then we're doing lowercase because we call it pickup, and then pickups.get, and now, this get gets the one out of the array list and we're referencing it by that name so now all of that other code just works which is super awesome uh, let's just go here and go All right, let's just put in a for statement there so I can tell. So we can see the pickups one, you know, there's a bunch of stuff going on here. Um, we'll have a pickup timer in a little bit. I'm gonna just save, let's run, does it work? And we got two pickups, excellent. So my health is down, let's go grab the heart, good. Now if I shoot a bunch, oh, and boom, I got ammo bags. Okay, it's working. So now we have two. What we want to do is now create a timer. So we're going to need a couple variables again for a timer. So with that, let's get some items in here for our pickup timer so that it gives us what we need. So we'll need a timer object call it pickup timer, that makes sense to me, and then our pickup interval. 
So let's now go down here and go pick up timer. It's equal to new timer. Oh, we need to first define our pickup interval. Pickup interval is equal to, we'll just say every two seconds it'll pop out anyone, and then we will go pick up timer, oh, pick up interval there. And now finally, pick up timer dot start. Okay. So our max pickups, I'm going to change that value now from 2. We're going to change that out to 5. We're going to start out with no pickups, so I'm going to just comment those out. We don't need those. So our max pickups is 5. Pickup interval will start out at 2 seconds, 2,000 milliseconds. And then our pickup timer is going to be a timer, and that will be every 2 seconds it will fire off and we will get a new pickup showing up on screen. Now it's just going to be a matter of adding in that standard timer language that we've used on prior projects here. Let's just format everything so it's nice and clean. Now with this, if our pickup timer is complete, let's see, that's enough parentheses for that. And pickup timer loop. So if our pickups dot size, remember we can when we say size, that's the same as with standard arrays when we ask about length. Size is for an array list. So, and it's a method, notice we have to actually put the parentheses after it. So if it's pickups max, so if it, as long as the size of the current pickup array is less than the pickups max, so again, it's nice not to put the number here where I have to then go and find it later, we really want, anytime we're assigning numbers or values to things, we want it to be inside our constructors. So inside our setup, inside the constructor for our different classes. If we do that, it's always so much easier to manage and update your code. All right, so if the pickups size or length, the number of pickups is less than the maximum pickups, well, let's add a new one. So I want to say pickups add a new pickup, but I need to randomly figure out which, you know, how often. So in this case, I figure I'm going to probably need to shoot more than I need to, um, or maybe I'll need health. I, I don't know. I mean, we'll have to figure it out. We could do, you know, random values. So if so what we're saying is if we round down 0, 1, 2 so if we're doing something like this is equal to 0. So if we round down a random number and we say random 3 so it rounds it down so we get 0, 1, 2 as our possible values. So that means kind of one third of the time it's going to be this value, then we will do a particular you know, one kind of pickup, else we will do the other kind of pickup. So the first pickup here will go pickups dot add new pickup and we'll just add ammo here because we're going to assume that it's um, we all need more health than ammo. If we figure we're going to be a really bad shot we could change you know the random number here we could change which is in which item but it also means that you know if you have like say all hearts and you're out of ammo well then you have to just go run over some hearts 
and then it will start giving you uh, hopefully an ammo pickup. So now if we run our project, let's move out of the way and after two seconds they all showed up because we never reset the timer on this. So I forgot to reset the timer so after we've added that then we want to reset the timer. So after we add a new one so every time we add a new one then we're going to reset the timer. I like that though. After two seconds we got five. Notice we got because remember we're going to get one-third of the time we will get ammo, two-thirds of the time we will get hearts. If you want it to be 50-50 we could change that to two and now actually well let's I'm gonna leave it at 50-50 and I'm gonna change my max value here up to 10 so we see 10 show up. I just want to see how random it is. So after two seconds we'll see 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 to 4, so it's pretty close. All right. But we could say 10 is how many I need, but with only one enemy, probably doesn't make sense to do that. But, you know, on your project, you have to figure out how you want to do it. So now let's put in the start on the timer. So every time we add a pickup, we tell the timer to restart. So now we've added in a pickup. Every two seconds, we get a new one. So now I can run through all my ammo, go and grab some, now we're up to 5, 10, got some health back. And now I can shoot this guy and shoot him again. Oh, no, I, whoa, okay, we lost, wow, we almost died. And now we got some health back, let's go get some more. So hey, it's starting to turn into a fully featured project. So we have shooting, we have collisions, we have pickups, animated pickups, health pickups, ammo pickups, so it's really starting to come together. So good luck and happy coding. So one final thing that we should do is we should update this so we're not just sending it off but we're actually removing it from the pickups array list and the easy way to do that is we just say pickups.remove and remembering that we specify based on position in that array list and that means we are using I as that. Same way we use pickups get, then we have pickups remove. They both use the array position where pickups add, then we specify um, the type of object that we are adding. So that's just one final thing that we need. So we're using all three methods. So we're using get, we're using remove, and we're using add with our array list.